You get the gluten free, right? Yeah. <laughs> I got it out. You can put on first off, I will. As soon as Dick has lighted the other candles, you may extinguish your candles. I kind of jumped the gum, didn't I? Is my mic on now? Okay, thank you. Thank you, you may extinguish your candles. The last time I was at a Easter vigil service was my first year of ordained ministry 25 years ago in Esterville, Iowa. And I couldn't figure out why it seemed so much lighter in here than it was at Esterville Lutheran that night. It's because we had the service an hour later. It just dawned on me. You may be seated. If it looks like I'm walking strangely tonight, it's because I had my second COVID shot yesterday and it did a number on my, I was telling <sighs> Shelly, right? Out in the narthex, I said, you know, got up this morning and every single muscle and joint in my body ached. But I'm protected, right? We will have, let's see, one, two, three, four readings in the Old Testament, and then we will have the gospel message. And then I'll share a, a short homily. And if you're familiar with the Roman Catholic Church, a homily is shorter than a sermon. A sermon is longer than a message. So I'm going to try to find a happy medium. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. While a wind from God swept over the face of the waters, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning, 
the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth and it was so God made the two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky, So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and have them, and let them have dominion over the fish and of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, He created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant, yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit you shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth everything that has the breath of life I have given every green plant for food and it was so God saw everything that he had made and Indeed, it was very good, and there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their multitude, and on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These 
are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Let us read together our response. God's mercy endures forever. And now from beginning with the uh, seventh chapter of Genesis and a host of readings through that short readings through there. Then the Lord said to Noah, go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of the air, seven pairs of the birds of the air also, male and female, to keep their kind alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heaven were opened. The rain fell on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. On the very same day, Noah with his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sins, sons entered the ark. They and every wild animal of every kind and all domestic animals of every kind and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth and every bird of every kind. Every bird, every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. The flood continued 40 days on the earth, and the waters increased and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters swelled and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. At the end of 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent out the raven. And it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out the dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set its foot, and it returned to him on the ark. For the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took it and brought it into the ark with him. He waited another seven days. And again, he sent out the dove from the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening, and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive. Freshly plucked olive leaf, sorry. So no one knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent out the dove, and it did not return to him anymore. In the 601st year, in the first month, on the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and saw that the face of the ground was drying. In the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, 
birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I'm establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth that with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. Anybody know what that covenant sign was? I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Let us read together the response. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Please excuse me as I put a hard candy in my mouth. Otherwise, my tongue sticks to the top of my mouth. Our reading comes from the 14th chapter of Exodus, beginning on the 10th verse. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back. And there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land. And the waters were divided 
the Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them. All of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian threw the Egyptians into a panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on the right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. And our response, I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. As for the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Let's just share our response. With joy, you will draw water from the well of salvation. Would you please rise for the gospel reading? You're going to know this pretty well by tomorrow. 
because I believe it is the gospel reading for Easter. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the foot. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he, that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Wow. Covered a lot, didn't it? Madeline, did you notice that it said in our first lesson that God created male and female at the same time? That's not how I learned it. It's because there's more than one creation story in the Bible. And that's what makes the Bible so cool. Because it doesn't just say it one way. It helps us to, to see with new eyes, to hear with ears that have been opened, and to believe with a receptive heart. I can't imagine what it was like for Mary, and no matter which version you read of of the women going to the tomb on Easter morning, whether it's one person or it's three or two. That's not the important thing. The important thing is that they looked for Jesus where they knew he should be. Right? According to everything that they knew, according to logic, oh, I don't like that word, because sometimes it, it forces me to, to limit my imagination. But they knew that he had died. 
They knew that he had been taken into the tomb. And what did they expect? To see him lying in the tomb. Yes, we celebrate Easter. We celebrate because we know that death could not hold Jesus. The grave could not hold Jesus. It still cannot hold Jesus. I had a discussion with a, an individual the other day, and they said, um, well, Pastor, you know, the stories in the Bible... Well, they're so old-fashioned. Yeah, you think? But I said the interesting thing, excuse me, but I'm gonna move down here so I can hang on to something. <laughs> the interesting thing is that they are universal, aren't they? They aren't stuck in, in a time trap. It isn't just for a certain period of time that these miracles occurred because they continue to occur. God gave us his only son. I don't know if I've worn it very much around here, but I have a t-shirt that has John 3.16 written on the front of the t-shirt in Hebrew. And on the back, it's written in English. When I went in to have my vaccination, the gal checking me in was a good friend of mine. She happens to be a congregational pastor. And she looked at my shirt and she said, okay, I'll bite, what does it say? I said, you can't read it? We didn't have to take languages. Oh, well it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not die but have life eternal. I said, do you want to see it? She said, no, I believe you. But when I was leaving, I had my jacket off, and so she could see the back of it where it's translated. And she said, but why in Hebrew? Why not, you know, why not in Greek? Because that would make more sense, because it's a New Testament reading. But because it challenges us to not become stuck that certain things can only be seen in certain ways. There are books of the Bible that are translated from the biblical Greek, or from the biblical Hebrew into the biblical Greek, but there are also a few of the books in the Old Testament that are, or the New Testament that are still in Hebrew. I can't tell you offhand what they were, I wish I could, but I can't right now. But that's what is so awesome about the Word. Because God gives us His Word to speak to us wherever we are, for whatever need we have, and He continues to give us that message. It's not a message that, that becomes worn out. Here's a question for you. Have you ever had a, a beloved family member you know, who says pretty openly, I love you? Can you think of a time when you would think, I already know that. You don't have to tell me that. I remember when my father and I were in the hospital with my mother. She'd had a a stroke, a brain aneurysm, and we were waiting for her to regain consciousness. And by the way, she lived another 12 years. She was already in her 80s, so she was a strong lady. And I always knew that my father loved me, that my mother loved me, but we were a good Norwegian family. You didn't necessarily say, I love you. It's like, you know, Oli and Lena. On their 50th anniversary, Lena turns to Oli and says, but you know, the celebration, it was good, but 
you never tell me you love me anymore. And Ole turns and looks at her and says, Lena, I told you on the day I married you that I loved you, and if that ever changed, I'd let you know. And people assume, I think, that we know what's in their heart toward us. But at that point in our family's life, every time I talked to my dad when we went to hang up, I said, I love you, Janie. I love you too, Dad. Now, I already knew it. He had told me that once when I was a little kid. No. He showed it. But to hear the words, it's no different than hearing the words in Scripture. We know it, but many times we have to hear it again and again. And then there comes that day when somebody quotes something from the Bible and we look at them and say, well, where'd that come from? Well, it's in the Bible. Really? Show me. The embarrassing thing is when they do show you. <laughs> you think, oh, I guess I didn't read my Bible well enough the last five times I read it through. But there's so much in those holy scriptures. Ultimately, the message, of course, is that God so loved the world, the world that he created, the world that he made, and that he made us caretakers of, God loves the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. And that is not news that ever gets old. I think I've, if I have done this here, I apologize, but I'm going to do it again anyway. I would like for you to um, follow along with me as I say the words, but where it says, for God so loved the world, I want you to, to insert your name. In, in other words, for God so loved Fred. Can we do that? For God so loved Jane that he gave his only begotten son. Wow. It's personal, isn't it? It's not a far-off concept. It's not a, a dream. It is the truth. And whatever we do is in response to that gift. Right? One of my two grandchildren, who was here this, the end of this week, turned to me and said, Nana, I know that there are Ten Commandments. By the way, it was the eight-year-old who did this. I know that there are, eight, uh, there are Ten Commandments. Which ones are the really important ones, though? So, well, honey, they're all important. Yeah, but some are bigger than others. <coughs> I said, well, what, what do you mean? Well, you know, remember the Sabbath day. Yeah, 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 go to church, worship God. That's pretty important. You know, honor your father and your mother. And I said, since your mother is sitting right here, that's a very important one for you to remember. But she said, do I have to obey all ten? I said, honey, it's not a pick and choose. You don't select your favorite one. And we all struggle with times when we haven't responded in the way that, that we knew we should. And through Jesus Christ's life, death, and resurrection, we repent and we go to God and we say, Lord, turn me around. I know that I'm going in the wrong direction. I know this is not your will for me. But not my will, but your will be done. We've heard those words before. As we listen and we tune in to what God is saying to us, whether it's, you know, with your own personal Bible at home, whether it's through music, 
Christian music is incredible these days. Well, I mean, it's always been good, but I especially like the, the more modern sometimes. But if we end, we hear it through our children. It takes all of us, all ages, all walks of life, We all make up the kingdom of God. Remember, that was what the disciples were looking for. They were looking for the kingdom of God. It was right before them. Is it right before us? I believe it is. Amen. Please rise for the intercessory prayers. I ask you to respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all the people of God according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you know before we do what our needs are. You know our neighbor's needs. Help us to open our eyes and to see what is important and what is necessary for them. Let us give them a hand up. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of all, we come to you this night remembering Christ's death on the cross and his resurrection. And as we gather again tomorrow to celebrate that resurrection even more fully, give us hearts that are filled to overflowing, that we leave from this place flowing with love toward our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray this day for government leaders for countries that are in times of trial. Lord, it's not for us to decide who's right or wrong. It is for us to love our neighbor and, yes, to love our enemies. That's a tough thing to do, Lord. Give us strength to work for what is right and just and fair. Lord, in your mercy. Be with those who are traveling this weekend to see loved ones. May they return to their homes safe. We pray for those who have been ill. And we pray for an end of this COVID. But Lord, help us to be wise in the meantime. Lay your healing hands upon all of your children who suffer this day. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for all your blessings. We raise our voices in grateful thanksgiving to you. We thank you for all that you give us for all that you do for us. And we thank you for giving us the strength to respond as you would have us respond. We pray this in your holy and precious name. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places 
Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Tomorrow, pick up the size medium gloves, not the small ones. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to this table. Come, eat, and be satisfied. body of Christ given for you, sir. The body of Christ given for you all. The body of Christ given for you, Linda. The body of Christ given for you, Richard. Body of Christ given for you, Dog. The body of Christ given for you, Dog. Thank you. The Holy Eucharist and the Bread. Thank you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you, Christy. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ. for you. 